Hello. Today I wanted to talk a little more about chaos. I was talking to some friends the other day about the Ian Fritz Chakwo uh, Chaos Generator and Quadrature Oscillator module. was thinking about it and realized that actually most of what it does can be patched up um, just using the surge as it is. Of course, if it's something that you use quite often, it's very handy to have uh, a module that will generate chaos signals just kind of natively. But just in order to, I don't know, have some fun, I enjoy kind of breaking down things like that and seeing if we can get similar results and take the ideas within that module and do them ourselves with uh, the system we have. And so just, I drew up the schematic for the Chakwo real quick, um, which is here. And basically what you have in the Chakwo is you have three outputs, which are chaotic outputs. And the chaos is a pretty simple system. There's an input, there's an integrator here, which is, you know, a low pass filter. That goes to a second integrator, so a second low pass filter. And then there's a feedback circuit, and it goes through a nonlinearity down here through these diodes. So this touches on a couple of things we've already talked about in this channel. Uh, this is a the potential double well problem uh, from quantum mechanics, and it will usually result if you look at the x and y outputs or the x and z outputs or anything on an oscilloscope. It'll exhibit chaotic behavior and result in a strange attractor that kind of creates two little, that orbits around sort of two centralized points and it exhibits chaotic motion all through that. My oscilloscope isn't working so hot so I won't actually show you that, but there are some good videos online where you can see this in action. But in any case, um, again, we have some sort of input and we have two integrators here that are controlled by one rate knob. There's a damping knob in between them. And then there's a coupler down here to go into the feedback path, a coupler that goes to gain. So what it, that's taking is, we have the output of the first integrator as the Y output, the output of the second integrator as the X output, and then those two come through the coupler, which is basically a crossfader, and then there's a bit of gain afterwards, and then we go into the feedback path. And there's a nonlinearity here of a couple diodes, and then it goes over here to where you can have the input come in and it goes back around. Um, so very simply, we can build this if we think of the integrators as, well, we could use the dual slope generator, but we also have the variable Q and variable slope filters, uh, which are gonna do, give us a couple more options. Basically, since they have resonance, um, they'll allow for a lot more interesting behavior than just using the dual slope generator, which we would have to patch in a couple ways to get kind of resonant behavior. For the input drive, we will just use uh, a sine wave out of the PCO. The coupler here is, an X, is a crossfader, so we have that very handily right here. And that's basically it. So I'll just start patching this. So what we have, is we take an input, let's start with this PCO. We're gonna start with the bottom one because the bottom one has a low frequency mode, which is just handy because the this chaos problem can be done at audio rate or at lower rates. And I find it's, especially starting out, easier to sort of get your head around what's happening if you're listening to it at lower audio rates. So our input to the system will be this sine wave. And the first integrator I'm gonna use is the variable slope filter. And that'll become clear in a second why I wanna go for the variable slope filter. One thing about the variable slope filter is that the output is inverted. And so if we, you know, we want to go from the first integrator to the second integrator, and the second integrator I'm gonna use the variable Q filter next to it, but I wanna make sure to preserve the phase. So I'm going to take the low pass output here and go to the upper section of the wave multipliers. The upper section of the wave multipliers does invert the signal as well. 
So the variable slope is inverting it and the wave multipliers is inverting it back. Um, the nice thing about the wave, having the wave multipliers here is we have this little, um, you know, we have a, 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 a volume pot here and we're going into the variable queue. So we also have a volume pot on the variable queue as well, but we can also throw the wave multipliers into high mode uh, to sort of square off the signal if we want while we're playing around. Because again, the point here is not to solve some physics problem, but just to make some fun sounds. So then we'll take the output of the wave multipliers and go into the second integrator, the variable Q filter. Then we're going from the output of the variable Q filter, we're going now into the feedback loop. And so like I said, there is this coupler first that sort of is a, is a crossfader between the output of the first integrator and the second integrator. So the low pass, so the output of the second integrator, let's just go into input two of the crossfader. And the output of the first integrator, again, the phase shifted 180 degrees and then back 180 degrees by the wave multipliers will go into the other side of the crossfader. Now we can crossfade between the outputs of the first and second integrators in the feedback path. And very handily, there was also a sort of gain in the input, in the, um, in the output path. And the surge crossfader does have a gain knob down here. So we kind of already have that covered. The last thing is just those diodes, uh, the nonlinearity. And I've talked about nonlinearities in other videos before. Um, and for this, we're just going to simply use the peak module. So we'll go out from the crossfader into the peak module. And then from the peak module, we'll just go back into the variable slope filter. And the reason I wanted to use the variable slope filter in the first place, not just because it has a different character to the variable Q filter, so we'll get some fun motion and that'll just make things a little more fun to play around with, but it also has the very handy crossfader between the drive input and the feedback input. So that'll be a lot of fun for when we start playing with things. Okay, so that's a pretty closed loop now. And all I really want to do just to sort of hear what's happening here is I'm going to take the other PCO, just a sine wave, and go into the stereo mixer, which is going out to the interface. And so then let's just hear that. And I'm just going to control the frequency of the oscillator with one of our chaotic outputs. Now, I showed in the uh, little schematic that there is an X, a Y, and a Z output. The output of the first integrator is the Y output. So we can take that from the wave multipliers here because, again, of this phase shifting thing that we've, we've done. The output of the the X output is the output of the second integrator. So that's just the low pass output from the variable Q here. And the uh, Z output is gonna be the output of the peak module here. So the feedback path after the nonlinearity and right before it goes back into feedback. So let's just take the output from the, um, from the wave multipliers here and go into the frequency modulation and see what happens. So not a whole lot at first, but first let's turn up. Okay, now we're getting some movement. Turn up the gains in the feedback path. And then the real things to play with here are the frequency of the driving oscillator and the rates of the two integrators, the, the cutoff frequencies of the filters. So I'm just gonna play around with that for a bit I'm going to turn up the volume a little bit. So you can hear it kind of get into this excited state and then settle down play around a little more. I'm 
playing with the resonance of the two filters and their cutoffs. Okay, so that's fun, and there's a lot of different patterns to find in there, and it takes a while to sort of play with the circuit and find some interesting patterns, some interesting zones where things fall into place and kind of snap into weird little patterns, kind of like I've talked about in some recent videos. But remember, we have three outputs here, the X, Y, and Z output. And right now we're just using a very simple one of the outputs to control the frequency of an oscillator. So why don't instead we take, let's just take a square wave from the PCO and go into this variable Q filter. And we'll take the low pass output of that variable Q filter and go into the mixer. And here we'll have the Y output here, changing the frequency of the oscillator, and we'll take the X output of the other integrator and go into the frequency of the filter. Now let's see what's happening here. And of course, one thing we can do here that uh, we can't do on sort of native chaos generators is voltage control all sorts of different aspects of this. So why don't we use a lot of feedback now, taking outputs and going to inputs, changing the drive frequency, um, and let's just play a little bit uh, to end the video.
anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration of how to patch up a relatively common quantum mechanics little physics problem on the surge and create a little chaos generator. I hope this was fun, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.